Back here on First Things First, and we are going viral. Kawhi Leonard dropped 30 points in Team LeBron's win, which earned the Claw All-Star Game MVP honors. But his biggest highlight came before the game. Check out Kawhi breaking out some dance moves during the All-Star Game guy. practice <laughs> pre-game intro. What do you rate this, guys? He still kept it cool. Like... He didn't go all the way out and have all the fun, but maybe the beat was slow. He, he didn't go renegade. And he done renegade, it definitely was. But he, he he knew what he was doing, though. I like it. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I would have liked to see him smile. Best, maybe a smile. Best player in the NBA? Oof. He's, 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 it's, it's, he's in the discussion. With who else? Giannis and still LeBron, I think. No, Obviously, he's more of a two-way player than LeBron at this point. And I like the fact that he's got a go-to shot. Yeah. LeBron doesn't, you know... LeBron's yeah. go-to shot is go to the Speaking pool. of the Lakers, let's talk to Marcus Cousins. According to head coach Frank Vogel, Boogie is on track to be healthy by the playoffs. And? Cousins, of course, <laughs> tore his ACL in August during preseason workouts. Chris, would a healthy Cousins give the Lakers the edge over the Clippers? No. Uh, they still would be the underdog in my view. And I, look. Boogie was very good at, at his in his time, okay? He hasn't played more than 50 games in like three years, okay? To think he's going to step in, even if he, you know, forget the chemistry issues that it presents, but even if he were to step in and everybody were to welcome him and he plays great, he hasn't played in very long, so it's going to be an issue. Then I've got a nice two-headed monster at center and a three-headed big man monster with A.D., JaVale McGee, and Dwight Howard. How does Boogie affect that? Boogie's going to want the ball. I, my offense is LeBron and A.D. Now i got to get it to Boogie. It's going to take away from A.D. Defensively, he's going to be challenged and have issues guarding on the perimeter and things like that. So Boogie, they, what they need from Boogie, is to do the little things. They got guys to do the big things. They need somebody to do the little things. Boogie's never done the little things. I don't think it would be a help at all. Mm, I, I don't. I don't even understand why Frank Vogel gave us that thought that he might play in the playoffs. Right. Like, right. It's not just the ACL tear. Before that, he had an Achilles tendon tear. He's not the same guy. Mm -hmm. And if we saw him last year in the playoffs, yeah, he can still get you buckets. No and again, worries. that was a year ago before he hurt his knee. But he can't guard anybody. And this team's built upon defense. What they need, if they added an additional big man, would be a stretch five. Somebody who can 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 keep the floor open and hit that corner three-point shot. Or or, you know, they already have rim protection in JaVale McGee and in Dwight Howard. So and and in Anthony Davis. I, I just I don't even understand why they didn't make a trade and use his roster spot and cut him. I know there's some salary cap implications with it, but I don't no disrespect to Boogie Cousins, who by all accounts has kind of figured out life a little bit right. since leaving Sacramento. But I just, I don't understand why we think he'd be a useful asset, considering the league has gone so guard heavy. They already have big guys, and he can't guard anybody, and he's barely played in the last two years. Outside of that, Mrs. Lincoln, <laughs> how was the show? Well, goodness, you guys both uh, kind of down on this one. All right, so... Do you think there's, he said it, just put it out there to kind of deke some other teams? I think like Doug said, I, I think he just was being honest. Yep. I mean, Frank Vogel's a great guy. He's an honest guy. And I think he was just giving his honest answer, not thinking about what it might mean, the ramifications and things like that. But look, believe me, Lakers opponents, and, and again, Boogie was great. He was a legitimate Four-time All-Star. Really he good. Was 25 points. Really good. Was, well, yeah, I mean, wasn't great. Yeah, I don't mean he was only scoring on bad teams with bad chemistry. Let's let's great. Just, my, right. I'm. I'm I, I didn't I got mean you. he's a yeah. Hall of Fame or anything like that. But you know, he was a numbers guy and he was a legitimate All-Star. But they don't need Boogie. They really don't. And it, look, opponents of the Lakers are hoping they put Boogie out there. Because that gives you something to attack. Boogie likes to shoot the three. You mentioned stretch five. I mean, he doesn't shoot it particularly well. He's okay. But he's he probably, took six a game in New Orleans. Right. And That's as many as Clay Thompson. Right, he's, so he's going to take he's, some bad he's, threes. I, 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 I would have to guess, and this again, this is just a guess. One of the underrated things about the Lakers is there has been zero drama. Right. Zero drama. And it, it's not for lack of drama. I and mean, they had a little bit with Cal Kuzma's trainer. You know, on, on social they, media. They but they squash yeah. that pretty good, right? Since the ball family's out of town, there's no drama, right? Magic Johnson, there's no leaks. And uh, a lot and of these guys have been drama 
guys in the past. LeBron, Rondo, Howard, Rondo. I mean, you go, go right. through it. So I, I can only guess that Frank's putting it out there so that he has a positive force in Boogie. As he's sitting there, he's with the team, he's traveling with the team, he's working out, putting that carrot out there. Hey, he's going to play for us in the playoffs. And then when he doesn't play in the playoffs, he'll handle that then. You know, with the use of, remember, there was, you're putting Jason Kidd on the staff, he's going to backstab Frank Vogel, nothing. Great chemistry, so you'd have to think that Frank wouldn't put that out there unless he had some idea of how it would play in the locker room and how it would help things for the second half of the season. And I think the players genuinely like Boogie. As you said, he's, you know, I've dealt with him a little bit. I think he's a fine guy. He's not you know, a device with the players and stuff like that. So I think they like him and in theory would like to see him out there. So this does bring more positive vibes to the locker room. Yeah. I just don't think it's going to help much on the court. All right. Well, chemistry is important as you head to the playoffs. Yes, indeed. We're going to take another break here and head back to the NFL afterwards. Will A.B. boost his Hall of Fame case with a return of the weekend? Pick it up in the untimed fourth quarter last night where the target score was 24 more than the leading team. So in this case, it's 157. The effort was there. Kyle Lowry draws a charge on Kawhi Leonard, and he wouldn't be done. Lowry taking another charge, this time on James Harden. Kyle Lowry played at Nova, not at Duke, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of Duke <laughs> falling down there. He is bumped up there. Team LeBron still up one, though, and LeBron puts him up three with that jam right there. Makes it 156 to 153. Remember, it's first to 157 wins it. Anthony Davis gets fouled. He's headed to the line. LeBron says... It is over. Live by the fly, flop, die by the flop if you're Kyle Lowry. Yeah, and he, he look, he was grabbing AD's arm, too. Right. It was a legit foul. AD sings the free throw to win it for Team LeBron, 157 to 155. Kawhi is your MVP with 30 points. Chris, we're going to start with you. This new format, was it a success? Oh, it was a rousing success. I loved it. I, look, and I had lost all interest in the All-Star game. I'm, I'm, All-Star weekend's great. You've been there, but all, the All-Star game hasn't been good, in my view, since 2014. And some people would go even further back than that. But this was phenomenal, and I've been watching games, All-Star games my whole life. I've never seen players in an All-Star game for the NBA compete this hard in the fourth quarter. And it got me thinking, when's the last time you've seen that much talent on the floor competing at that level. Now, I'm not saying the quality of play was higher than we see in the playoffs and in the finals and stuff like that because the teamwork, you know, camaraderie, you know, all that, those teams right. are better. But right. just sheer individual talent, this was phenomenal, and I think it was due to the new format. I like, Doug, the fact that they went with the quarter stuff where you can win each quarter. Yeah. And, you know, they it's old, did it. That's old CBA style, right? You yeah. In the CBA, which before the G League, back before it was the D League, and the, it was the CBA, you used to get points on your standings for winning a for quarter. For winning a quarter. Yeah. It, I don't know. Look, I don't want to get into whether or not they should look at doing this in the regular season. I mean, we could talk about that another time. But I liked it because if you're getting blown out, you you got new life every quarter. Right. And you saw it. Giannis, Giannis's team got blown out in the first quarter. Then they blew out LeBron in the second quarter. Third quarter is a tie. And in the fourth quarter, they really went at it. I loved it. I thought it was a great success. and It was the best All-Star game I've seen in years. It's the best All-Star game I've seen in years because I don't like watching. I love basketball. Right. I love all these players. I don't like watch because they usually give zero, zero effort. Mm -hmm. Zero effort, especially the defensive end. And for the most part, that was this game to, on some Early level. on, yeah. Uh, the first the four, three quarters. I thought the fourth quarter was outstanding. I'd like to think some of it is the Elam ending. I also think a good portion of it is kind of honoring a little bit the legacy of Kobe Bryant. I mean, I, I do think that motivated. And I think, you know, guys are fighting for supremacy, right? Giannis wants, Giannis has the title of MVP, but it's still LeBron's right, league. Right. You know, Kawhi's still the fight. They're like all kind of fighting for their space in the grand landscape. And, and we don't have... KD, we don't have Steph, right? We don't have Kyrie on the floor. We're missing, we don't have Clay. We're missing four guys who would be out there. So it wasn't maybe even the best of the best, but cons all things considered, it was fun. I, I The flaw to the Elam ending is what you saw, like ending it on a free throw. Right, right. Not uh, optimal. If they could fix that, because I agree with you, it was outstanding the way, like, I when I heard all of these changes, 
I thought, eh, they're gimmicky, they're not going to work. But I figured, look, nothing can be worse than it had gotten. Right, it's the All-Star game. I yeah, and, and, and I think a big, when the, when the All-Star game got terrible, in my view, is when they began shooting too many threes. I tracked it. Back in, like, 2013, they might have shot 80, 90 threes combined. And then all of a sudden in 2014, they go up to 108. Then it's up to 120-something, then 130-something. Yesterday it was back to about a 110. Uh, it, it just seemed like, you're right, the, the first three quarters was I typical All-Star. There's lots of No I mean, defense.